What are the four simple fundamentals of the gospel? Thank you for 100,000 subscribers. Don't forget to join us live December 10th and 11th. We're racing for 24 hours straight on these true form runners. We got over $10,000 worth of gear, gear to give away to you guys. You know you can't beat me, right? Uh, we'll see about that, brother. Yeah, we will see. We're one for one. This is the <laughs> tiebreaker. See you guys live December 10th and 11th. Enough said. What's up, guys? Welcome to the 307 Project headquarters. We're going to bring you a uh, brand new type of content today, all right? Uh, probably the most important type of content we could share with you. Um, and where this came from, all right? Where this came from is we had a student on the basic course the other day who grew up in Iran. This was a beautiful human being. He had different uh, he had a different understanding of faith or a different, uh, different belief system than we had, though, as Christians. And by the end of the basic course, this gentleman came up to us and let us know that he was going to start reading the Bible. Uh, but he followed up that statement with the fact that the Bible was confusing. Okay? And uh, he was a little bit, you could tell, a little bit stressed about that. This is a big old book right here, and it can look overwhelming. And many people do think that the Bible is confusing, especially when they're first thinking about maybe picking it up and trying to read it, which I highly recommend you doing. It's the best seller of all time, the best selling book of all time in all of human history. The good thing is, here's the good news, and we're going to talk about more good news here in just a little bit. The good news is the Bible isn't actually confusing. Uh, pretty much the entire book points you all to the same direction. And if you can understand the fundamentals of what the Bible and the books of the Bible are trying to tell you, if you can understand those fundamental threads, then it's extremely easy to grasp. It really is in all ways. Um, so this series is going to be about the fundamentals of Scripture, the fundamentals of knowing God's Word, and what we actually need to really grasp and understand about what this book tells us. All right, Today, we're going to talk about, start this off with the absolute fundamental thing about what all Scripture points to, and that is Christ, Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about why Christ, and we're going to talk about the gospel of Christ, the good news, okay? I'm going to give you guys four points that the gospel... Uh, is encompassed by four points. It's super easy. Um, the gospel of Christ is the good news. Before there's good, before we know what good, what the good news is, though, there has to be a little bad news, and that bad news is encompassed in what we characterize as the gospel of Christ uh, in those four points. So here we go. Let's dig into this. What is the gospel? So first of all, this is the this is the beginning. Okay. We have to come to the conclusion, which I think scientifically, experientially, and logically, uh, we should all be able to come to this conclusion. It's actually the easiest step in understanding the gospel. We have to come to the conclusion that there is a perfect being, a perfect eternal being that exists outside of time, space, and matter who created all of this, the entire universe, all right? He literally is the creator. I say he, it's a being. This being is the creator of time, space, and matter. He is eternal, and we call that being God. He is absolutely perfect. He sets the standard or the plumb line for what is good and what is bad. How do we know that being is perfect? We can see his perfection in this universe that he has created. That's one way. Another, another way is we see his perfection by what he's revealed to us about himself in this book right here, or this series of books called the Bible. So we know there's a perfect being. That's a whole nother video. We can talk, we can go way down that rabbit hole why that's the truth. But if there's a perfect being that created all this, that's what we believe. Part of that creation was us, humanity, okay? 
He created us as humans when he created the universe. Why did God create us as humans? I believe he created us because uh, he wanted to be in companionship, all right, with something. He wanted to be in companionship, much the, much the same reason that we own dogs, all right? He wanted to be in companionship with a being that, uh, that loved him back, that wanted his affection and his attention, that depended on him. That's much the same as my relationship with my dogs is, all right? And I believe that's why he created us. Now, he created us in the beginning as perfect beings, just like him, and we were in companionship with him. But something happened, all right? Something happened, and here is point number three. Point number one was there's an eternal God that's perfect. Point number two is he created us as humans. Point number three, here's what happened. We actually severed our connection with him because we wanted to be like him, all right? God created us with the ability to make choices to a certain extent. It's called free will. Has, you have to have, if to be in companionship with a being, that being has to choose you back, right? If, you did, if we weren't created with a certain level of free will, we would not be companions with God. We would be robots, okay? We severed that because of essentially pride. We wanted to be more like God. We weren't satisfied with that pure companionship, all right? And what happened is we chose to know evil. We chose to know what it meant to deviate from the perfection that is God, our Father. All right? And when that knowledge of evil entered into the equation of humanity, that knowledge has resided within us from that point to this point that we are right now. And it's that very knowledge of evil that severed the connection with us and our Creator. It's always in our minds. It's always tempting us. We're always trying to do good, but we are unable to live a perfect life in companionship with God as we were created to do. Christianity and the Holy Bible is one of the only books that's going to tell you the truth about you. And that is that you cannot be perfect. You cannot be good. You can do good, but you cannot be perfect. As soon as you deviate from perfection, you are no longer good. That connection was severed. All right? So... When a, when a mistake is made, when, when, when a relationship is severed, there has to be a sacrifice to reconcile these two things back together, us and God, okay? For God to be a totally righteous judge, he had to provide a sacrifice that covered our wickedness, our poor decisions, our inherent sin. All right? He had to make a sacrifice, and he did that. And this is the fourth point of the gospel. The fourth point is that God literally became man in who we know as Jesus Christ. Everything in this book points you to Jesus. His coming his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Everything in this book is pointing you to Jesus. The sacrifice that had to be made for us, okay? And this is what I want you to grasp. This is the fourth point. He came down onto this earth. God lived a perfect life in the man of Jesus. Literally a sinless life. He's the only human to ever do it. And... Because of that, we, wicked humans, crucified him. Okay? Now, this was the blood sacrifice. Jesus went to the cross. He literally took the burden of the eternal, the, the, not eternal, 
but the entire sins of humanity from the beginning of the earth to the end of this age. He took all the wickedness that exists in us as humans and he took that upon himself and he literally allowed himself to be brutally crucified and to cover all of that with the blood of his sacrifice. All right? And so he was. He was crucified. He bore the burden of our sins. He died. He was buried. And now here's the good news in this first, fourth point right here. He came back from the dead. He came back from the dead, literally. He came back, bodily rose from the dead. All right? And when he did that, when God did that, he gave us the option to have victory over eternal death in hell and the sin that controls us and is inherently in us as human beings. He gave us victory. He gave us the ability to choose victory over all of those things. And that victory means that we are reconciled back into relationship with Him through His sacrifice. <clears throat> it's that simple. If you want to accept Jesus Christ, if you want to accept God, if you want to reconcile yourself back to your Creator, all you have to do is know that God is perfect, that you are not, and that God provided a sacrifice in the man, God, Jesus Christ, on the cross to cover your mistakes. All you have to do is know that and accept this free gift and you have victory and you will find yourself back in companionship with God your creator, in the very next moment. Pretty freaking simple, man. There's a lot more to expound upon in that, but those are the four points of the gospel. Hope you guys understand that. Understand that pretty much everything in this book points you to those four points. And that's one of the fundamental things that you need to look for and that you need to understand about this Bible when you pick it up to read it. Enough said.